If you are new to the Mac or maybe you're just setting up a new Mac and you're unsure about all of the different system preferences that you can use to uh, tweak the appearance and operation of your Mac, then stick around because I'm going to be running through them all in this video. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and in this video, I'm going to be running through actually not all of the system preferences, but just the ones that I would go through when setting up a new Mac and just sort of basically getting things the way you want them in terms of the dock, the some simple operations in terms of the way that Windows are handled and things like that. Uh, and so uh, that's what I'm going to be going through in this video. And uh, it's actually it's taken me a little bit of a while to produce this, considering that I got my new Mac uh, just over a week ago now, and I still haven't actually been and created this uh, this content. So uh, been a bit busy with work, and so I thought what I'd do is uh, rather than get it all set up I would just wait until I had the time to make this video to show you the process that I go through so that uh, maybe you don't want it exactly as I've got it but hopefully by watching the video you might gain a few little insights and little tricks of things that you can do to help you set up your Mac. <laughs> so um, let's get straight on into it shall we and I'll share my uh, screen and uh, I'll tell you where you can find the uh, system preferences app. So first of all it is uh, looks like this system preferences the little cog wheel but there's every likelihood that it won't actually be in your uh, uh, dock to start with so if you look in your applications folder so open up a finder window and you've got applications on the uh, left hand side usually in a new mac it should be just there uh, and then you can find it in here by scrolling down and there it is system preferences but there is another way you can get to it as well if you press uh, command space that starts spotlight on a mac and then you can start typing in uh, system preferences and it will usually just auto uh, populate what the uh, full title is so if i click return system preferences and then that's going to load up the system preferences app I'll leave this finder window here for the moment uh, and let's have a look at the system preferences and basically we're going to be talking about the things that are in this sort of top area here. These are all related to sort of general settings, the desktop and screensaver, uh, dock and menu, uh, mission control and things like that. So I won't go down into all of these other ones because it's li literally just the sort of initial setup that I'll be talking about. So let's uh, start with the general settings. Now here, the uh, first one is appearance. Now, when you actually started your new Mac, uh, it would have probably asked you which you prefer, light or dark mode or automatic. But if uh, not, or if you uh, want to change it, this is where you do it. So you can change between dark, the correct setting, <laughs> or light mode, the wrong setting. <laughs> That is just my opinion, but other opinions are available, so uh, no hard feelings if you like light mode. That is light mode, and uh, it's a bit bright for me, and the reason why I prefer dark mode is uh, I find that it allows me to concentrate on the content rather than uh, be distracted by uh, all of the sort of light content that's going on in the uh, around all the windows and menus and things like that, so that's just my personal choice. You can obviously have it as, uh, uh, I'll say obviously, there is an option to have it as automatic where it'll switch between light and dark depending on the time of day and some of Apple's built-in screen uh, uh, desktop pictures will actually subtly change from one to another so it doesn't just suddenly instantly switch over to uh, dark from light. Uh, so that is quite a nice little feature really if you, uh, as I say, like light mode as well as the dark mode. But I do always have it on uh, dark mode. I will just leave it on light for a moment as we go through some of these others though because there's one in particular that may be a little bit relevant uh, to light mode. So the next thing is accent color and this is basically uh, all of these little colors that you have uh, in the window. So for example these little arrows here are blue. Uh, let me zoom in on that a little bit. Uh, these little radio buttons they're called are uh, blue as well and then you've got these little check boxes which are also blue. Similarly in the uh, finder for um, these little icons down in the sidebar menu, those are all blue as well. So we can change this accent color over here. So if I change to uh, green, for example, then now you'll notice that all of these little accents have changed to green. Uh, and similarly in this window, they've all changed to green as well. So you can change to any one of these uh, different colors here. The highlight color is actually the uh, text highlighting. So if I come to a random website, look at that, what a great website that is the Ecamm Live website. And uh, what you can see is as I highlight text, then it's highlighted in green, which is this highlight color here. So that's how you can change that. Next, we've got the sidebar icon size. Now I did actually mention sidebars. Uh, that is an any 
lots of apps have these, which is basically this bar that runs down to the side. <laughs> and that is called the sidebar. And you can change the size of any icons that are in there. So at the moment it's set to medium, which is the default. But you'll notice if I change over to a uh, small, then all of those little, oops, Daisy, all of those little icons will change and it condenses all of the information. So you actually get to see a little bit more. So I tend to have all of my stuff small, but if you uh, are maybe can't see quite so clearly, then you can also make them larger as well. And so they do just pop out a little bit more. But as I say, I'm gonna put mine too small, which is the way that I always have them. Uh, now the next one is allow wallpaper tinting in windows. And this basically allows the, the color of the wallpaper behind to sort of uh, bleed through slightly into the actual window itself. So if I click that one on, then basically it's a little bit hard to tell really, but it just allows uh, some slight tinting to go on of the, uh, the window itself. Uh, and this is more noticeable in light mode than it is in dark mode. But uh, again, personally, uh, you can see the sort of slight color coming through. So I usually have that one off though anyway. Uh, and I'm gonna turn it back to dark mode now because this is hurting my eyes. <laughs> there we go. Now the next one is, uh, now let me just put these back because I've actually just jumped ahead. <laughs> uh, these ones are uh, for the scroll bars. So this is where you've got a scroll bar like this, uh, or if you've got a website, for example, uh, where you've got a scroll bar at the side. Uh, so that's this scroll bar here. Um, or if you've got a document, then you'll obviously have a scroll bar in that. So if I open up a particular document, I'll open up a PDF. So here again, we've got this scroll bar at the side. So it says show scroll bars uh, automatically based on mouse or trackpad. So that's basically uh, depending on the mouse or trackpad settings. The next one is when scrolling. So you can see how when I toggle to that setting, the scroll bar has now disappeared from the document. But if I start to scroll, you'll see that the scroll bar does uh, reappear, uh, but then it will just fade out as I uh, stop scrolling. So uh, that is that you can have it when it's uh, scrolling. I actually just have it so that it's always on because I do like to be able to get that sort of visual representation of exactly where in the document we are. If you can see that the scroll bar is tiny and it's up there, then you obviously know that you've got quite a way to go uh, before you get to the bottom of the document. So I always find that quite helpful. Uh, the next one is uh, click in the scroll bar to, and then you've got two options, either jump to the next page or jump to the spot that's clicked. So this is basically saying that uh, if I click in this scroll bar at the moment, it will just basically jump down a page at a time. And no matter where I click in the uh, bar, it will still just jump down to that particular page. Uh, whereas if I click jump to the spot that's clicked and then I come to here, then it will just jump straight down to that particular point in the, uh, in the document. So that is basically what uh, these uh, do. So I'll just close this document and then the next thing we've got is the default web browser. So you've either got Safari or if you've got Chrome installed or any other browser uh, you can choose which one is the default that things open in. Next is uh, prefer tabs in full screen when opening documents. So that is if you've got documents open and you, you are in full screen mode then it will prefer to open those in multiple tabs in the same window. Uh, however, you can also change it to uh, never do that so that that means that uh, basically it never prefers tabs. If you open a new document, it'll just open it in a new window uh, regardless. Um, or you can have it so that it always opens in tabs no matter whether you're in full screen mode or not. Next is ask to keep changes when closing documents. So that might be a safe one to toggle on so that basically you always get asked if you really want to uh, close without saving. Uh, make sure that you do uh, save any changes. Uh, the next one is close windows when quitting an app. So that is if you've got an app which has multiple windows open, um, if you have that uh, 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 clicked on, <laughs> it actually tells you here, when selected, open documents and windows will not be reopened when you reopen the app or not be restored. So um, that's basically saying that, you know, if you have it, if you have that switched off, then when you close down the app and you reopen it again, all of those windows will be maintained. So the next one is uh, the number of recent items. So if you're in any particular app, then uh, let's just come to a particular app. Let's say this one, <laughs> I should have opened this in advance. So if you have a look at this and then come into uh, file and then recent, you'll see different recent items that have been opened in there. So that is basically just saying what is the default for the number of documents that are open. Uh, next is allow handoff between this Mac and iCloud devices. Uh, so that's basically where if you open something, like if I was to, for example, uh, just to go into my phone now, for example, uh, 
and then I go to uh, mail then you can see how it opens up here that mail from iPhone has opened and that means that if I'm working on an email in that then I can have it so that it also copies over into um, uh, I, can, I can basically continue working on it that's what a handoff is so here you can allow it or not on this particular Mac Mac. So there we go we've done all of the uh, general tab so let's now have a look at the desktop and screen saver. Right so with the, this one we're going to start with the desktop you can see that there's a couple of tabs actually at the top of this particular page so we're going to start with the desktop and it's first of all asking for the, uh, the graphic and uh, if you remember where I told you it could change between the light and the dark scene uh, so here it's set to automatic and that means that basically if we just go back to that other setting for the general if we'd had this setting to auto then what that would do is it would uh, change the um, uh, the desktop background from uh, light to dark however you can force it to be on one or the other so we can just force that to be light or we could force it to be on the uh, the dark so I'll put it to the light one so even though we are in dark mode we could still have the light colored picture and that is something that's specific with uh, these Mac desktop uh, pictures that they've uh, got built in so you can see if it's one of these desktop images where you've got this sort of two-tone thing and this little icon in the middle it means basically it's going to change from one color to the next or one tone to the next so that's how you can identify which ones have got that sort of feature built in and in fact it even tells you here doesn't it <laughs> light and dark desktops uh, and the same with these dynamic desktops that change uh, through a series of colors over the day so for example like this one depending on the time it might be this very dark color or it might go all the way through to light at sort of the middle of the day and so on so these ones all change throughout the day you could also change it to a flat color uh, so personally I'm probably a little bit boring but I tend to have all gray <laughs> like this this is my default background is just a uh, plain gray color so uh, I might just leave it back as it was just to uh, <laughs> just to make it a bit more interesting for you viewers at home <laughs> for now uh, but I'll probably change it to gray afterwards <laughs> so you have been warned so that is that with the uh, the screensaver now what you can also do uh, is you can also oopsie daisy I didn't mean to press that there we go we've got a nice uh, blue color there uh, let me come back to this one you can also, if you've got a uh, folder full of uh, um, images, you can also, if I come into this one, one of these ones, if you're uh, in these ones, it doesn't work because these change based on uh, based on the time of the day. But any of these are the desktop pictures. You can also click here and change it to uh, change every every hour, every 30 minutes. So if you want these to change randomly throughout the day, then you can have these. These are a collection of Apple's uh, uh, sort of wildlife and uh, geographical locations uh, imagery so you can have that but you can also just add a, a folder of your own so if you've got a particular folder of uh, desktop images you can create that and then you can have it just change through them or have some sort of random order to it so that it just randomly changes from uh, one to another so those are all options for basically the desktop but I'm going to back, go back to being a little bit boring and after I finish this video I'm going to go back to being very boring and have my grey background. <laughs> so next we've got the uh, screensaver and uh, there are a few different options for screensavers and if you do leave your computer on for a long time then it's definitely a good idea to have some sort of uh, thing to uh, so that you don't burn anything into screens. It's not quite as much of an issue as it used to be but it still certainly can be um, uh, stand, can cause issues with monitors. So you can ch change the time that your screensaver is going to uh, come on after. So uh, how long it's going to be before it comes on. And then you can also choose to use any one of these built-in screensavers. And it gives you a little preview of it here. And if you click on the preview, it will go full screen. I'm not going to actually do that now because I'm not sure how Ecamm Live will handle that if I actually do it uh, full screen in the middle of doing this demo. So I'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, and then you can also just pick to use a random screensaver. You also have the option to have the clock show on the screen uh, when the screen savers on uh, if you want to have the time visible on your screen and then there's another option here which is a little bit hidden away but it's actually got a few more features than you might think and it's this one called hot corners so if I click on that it opens up this other little panel so it's a bit hard to find sometimes I think there could be perhaps better placed because uh, it isn't just about screensavers um, so basically what this is is if you move your mouse into any particular corner one of the four corners of the screen you can have it perform an action so you could have it so that it basically launches the screensaver uh, when you put your 
mouse into the corner of the screen for example so start screensaver so that now that is uh, enabled so if I just move my mouse into the corner uh, I'm not actually going to do it but if I just push my mouse up into that corner it would start the screensaver I also usually have this set up to be honest to uh, sleep display but not for this top corner because this is where um, you have what's called um, uh, the notification panel <laughs> pops out from the top corner so I usually change this to uh, nothing <laughs> but I have this one set to put the display to sleep so if I just move my mouse down into that bottom corner it just puts the display to sleep completely um, but as you can see you've got all of these other things so mission control mission control is this thing where when you are in uh, any application whoops a daisy I pressed the wrong button there this is this thing in fact I don't know if that's going to show on my screen or not uh, in fact, I don't think it has, has it? <laughs> no, uh, it sort of basically shows you all of the different uh, apps that you've got running. So that is mission control. So you can have that one toggled on, uh, but you could also have launch pad. So it brings up all your different apps and things like that, uh, or just shows you your desktop. So that one just wipes everything off the uh, the screen momentarily so that you can see your desktop. I don't think all of these are going to actually translate on uh, Ecamm Live. So I'm going to stop actually pressing them because <laughs> I don't think you can see what's happening. Uh, but this is basically how you can set these up. Uh, just bear in mind if you do have second monitors uh, to either side then uh, you perhaps don't want them to necessarily be, use the hot corners on the side where you might be moving over to those monitors so that you don't accidentally press them but anyway that is uh, hot corners and that is where it is a little bit tucked away out of the way there I'll come back to the main screen now and let's have a look at the dock because I really do need to get my dock sorted out I, uh, I don't have uh, massive icons like this at the bottom of my screen and I don't have them persistent on the screen either so uh, this is dock and menu bar actually so the first section that we're going to look at is the dock and you can change the size so you can see that as I change the size here it's basically changing the size of my dock icons and rather than this massive size like this uh, I tend to have mine uh, pretty small like that but when you hover over them if they're too small you won't be able to see them but it does have this magnification so here you can change basically how big they are when you uh, move your mouse over them so let me just uh, move that down a little bit it's probably a little bit on the large side but there it just makes it easier they pop out as you're scrolling over them for you to click the one that you want you can also change the position on the screen uh, I did actually used to for quite some time have my dock over on the right hand side uh, but when I've started moving around with lots of different monitors and things like that I've uh, ended up just coming back to uh, the old favorite <laughs> having it at the bottom but if you do want to move the position that is where you can do it you can have it on the left the right or the bottom uh, the next is minimize windows using genie effect and this is basically if you watch when I click this window it's basically going to look like it's sucked down into its little position on the menu bar like that and in fact if I just bring this one up again I don't know if this still works I haven't done this for years but if I pull down whoopsie daisy uh, Doc will know what's happened there <laughs> that is me having not deactivated my drawing tool on my pro mouse and so I went to press option and it started uh, started drawing so sorry about that but if I hold down the option key when I press this arrow it actually should I think uh, it doesn't do it in fact <laughs> wait a minute let me try that again uh, it always used to just uh, actually close it slowly but it doesn't do it anymore never mind uh, you get the impression <laughs> I was going to show you that in slow motion seems that uh, that option does not work anymore of option clicking it to do it in slow motion but anyway so that is basically what that is so it it is the called the genie effect so you can have it use the genie effect or you can have it use the scale effect which is basically just the same it just gets smaller rather than narrows at the bottom first it's uh, a minor thing really and uh, it doesn't really make any difference to the operation so uh, if you can be bothered to click on the button to change it it's, you can but otherwise it won't really make any difference double click a windows title bar to zoom so that is basically if I was to click in the uh, in fact it won't work in that one let me bring up a different window shall I I'll bring up preview if I was to double click in the bar here then you can see how it maximizes it and if I double click again it minimizes it so that is basically this uh, double click a windows title bar to zoom and that makes it full screen uh, or you can have it to minimize it which means it would take it down into the bar so if I had it like that and double clicked on the bar like that it would minimize the window so personal preference there which one you prefer I tend to have zoom because it's just an easy way to make something full screen if you want it full screen 
The next one is off by default, but I actually like this on. And this, what this is, is if I, uh, let me just come back and actually make my dock bigger now that I've made it smaller. Let me make it bigger so that you can see what's going on here because what I've got is I've got a load of apps at the bottom and uh, I don't know if you can see these dots, but some of them are open. So Safari is open, Audio Hijack, uh, Ecamm Live uh, and so on. And then we've got uh, Microsoft Excel. Is that still open? Let me close that. Don't need that open. And then we've got Preview as well. But over on this side, we've got all of these different things that I've got open. So for example, that preview document, that PDF, PDF that I had open is now minimized down to here. So if I click on it, it will open it again. And when I shut it down or minimize it, you can see how it goes back into the dock, into that space there. Well, this one here will basically uh, minimize windows into the application instead. So if I open up this, this document like this and I toggle this one on, then basically when I minimize it, instead of going back down into that particular position there, it's just simply gone into the preview win uh, app itself. And so the way you can access that again, if you've got multiple documents open, I find that this can get a bit cluttered. So instead you can just right click on here and you can see all of the different documents. And if it's open, you'll see that it's open just there like that. So that is uh, basically how I have that set up. You can also say animate opening applications. So that is basically when you open an application and it bounces in the dock and you see it animated in the uh, as it opens. Again, personal preference, you can have that on or off. Uh, automatically hide and show the dock. Now this is one that I do have on because I don't particularly like the dock to be there all the time when I'm working uh, because I don't actually use it a huge amount. I'm often just launching things with keyboard shortcuts and things like that. Uh, so if you click automatically hide and show the dock, then it will disappear until you just move your mouse down to the bottom and then it will pop up again. So it just keeps it nicely out of the way when you don't need to see it, which is probably most of the time actually. Show indicators for open applications. Well, if I just unhide the dock, that is that thing that I was talking about. These little dots that you get underneath an application where you can see that it's uh, whether it's open or not. Uh, so this is where you can actually turn that on or off. I think that's quite useful to have on just so that you can see if you've got anything open uh, and also show recent applications in the dock. So uh, basically in the dock you've got all of these ones over here which uh, you may have added in that are permanently in the dock but then you have this little separator bar and then you have these ones here which are uh, basically the um, uh, recent applications. So it's not permanently in the dock it just was recently used. So I was recently using Zoom it's not in the dock and uh, permanently and so that's why that's appeared here. But at any time you can actually just click one of these uh, so if you thought maybe you do want Zoom to be in your dock permanently then you can just click it from here and you can drag it out to any position that you want it to be uh, in the rest of your dock. So that is the show recent applications. Uh, then you've also got in the same way that we had automatically hide and show the dock. If I just come to here, we can also have automatically hide and show the menu bar. And the menu bar obviously is this little bar up at the top where all your menus are. So you can have that one hidden. Now I never actually use that. I always have it so that it's permanently shown. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Personally, I do want to be able to see all of these menus at the top. And I also do have menus like uh, uh, little applications like iStat menus running so I want to be able to see the little stats and things like that in the top menu bar so but if you want that hidden as well to have a completely minimalist approach then you can certainly do that there. The next uh, settings we've got down here in fact while we're still on the dock let me just come back to this for a moment and I'll make it larger and I will uh, unhide it <laughs> So I'll stop hiding it. Uh, there's another couple of setup things that I do with the dock, which is uh, you'll notice here that you've got your downloads. Uh, these ones still haven't been minimized into their thing yet, but they will do next time I open and close them. If I open up Safari and then minimize, it will now disappear into its uh, um, app. Uh, Audio Hijack will now disappear into its app. So that's already looking a lot clearer. And then this one, this Finder window will also disappear into its app. So the uh, couple of things that are left here is the bin or the trash. Uh, and then we've also got downloads and downloads by default you can see that it basically looks like just a pile of different icons on top of each other. I don't know if you can make that out uh, but when we click on it it's basically going to uh, sort of fan out all of those different things that are in the downloads folder. So as you, uh, uh, if you right click on it, you can change either from a fan view to a grid view. So that's now in a grid view. Uh, 
or you can change this into a list view and that one comes up with a list. I tend to prefer a list because it makes it much easier to see the full uh, name of the files. Whereas when you're in grid view, sometimes they're truncated a little bit. Uh, also when you're in fan view, it's the same thing. And it's just, uh, although it just show you the full name, when you start having lots of files, then it just becomes a little bit ridiculous to manage. So the uh, list view just seems to me to be a lot uh, simpler. You can also change the way that it's viewed. So what they this is called is a stack because it looks like just a stack of icons or documents or whatever it is in there. Uh, but you can also just change that to a folder. So personally, I think that looks a little easier to see exactly what it is. And if you do have other um, applications minimizing, so if you're not using this minimize into application, uh, so you, you do end up with lots of other things here. Uh, having it set as a folder for me personally just means it pops out as exactly what it is. It is the downloads folder and there's no question about what that is so that is uh, just one other thing to have for the uh, the sort of organization in the doc is to decide whether you want to use stacks or a folder and how you want them to uh, to be displayed you can also change the sorting as well so sorting by date added date modified date creative created or the kind uh, so I always have date added so that basically if I click in here I always know that the one that is the top is the most recent addition to the downloads folder so that was a slight diversion there into uh, into the the doc, uh, but now let's come back to this uh, uh, preferences window and have a look down here. So we've got the control center, and that is basically uh, let me come up to the top corner, and that is where is it here? <laughs> this little icon here. So control center, and this is where you can change your uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, things like that. And so these are just some settings that you've got uh, here. You can decide whether you want these things to be shown in that little uh, control center. So uh, again, like I say, you can see that this, this sort of panel layout that we've got in the top here, this is directly related to what they're showing you in here. So you can either have the, uh, the Wi-Fi showing or not, and you can just sort of move things around in here and decide exactly where you want them. Uh, so Bluetooth, do you want to show it in? Uh, in fact, let me just come back to this one moment. Uh, so this is actually for, do you want to show it in the uh, the menu bar itself? So you can have it showing in the menu bar as well as in the uh, control center. So you can toggle that on and off here. Um, but then you may not want the Bluetooth showing, for example, or AirDrop, things like that. But again, you can toggle them all on there if you want. Uh, do not disturb as well. And so show in menu bar. So that can be either when it's active. So if you've got do not disturb active, it will show it in the menu bar. Otherwise, it won't be there. Or you can have it so that it shows always. Again, screen mirror. Uh, mirroring options so the setups for these sort of things are elsewhere in the uh, in the system preferences but this is just basically showing you how they will appear and uh, whether to show them in the menu or not uh, so the next section we come down to is the uh, uh, we've done these are all the same sorts of things so for sounds uh, now playing uh, accessibility shortcuts uh, I'm going to have to do a whole thing on that because uh, personally it's not something that I use a huge amount uh, but it is something that warrants an entire video in its own right so I'll come to uh, accessibility shortcuts uh, separately uh, fast user switching so that is if you've got multiple users using the same Mac uh, then you may want to have that on and shown in control center uh, so that basically you can just switch between users easily on a Mac but since I'm the only one that uses this Mac I don't bother with that one and it's not on by default by the way so if you wanted to switch it on that is where it would be uh, next is the menu bar um, clock so we've got the clock here you can change between either digital or analog uh, the default is analog uh, sorry the default is digital <laughs> uh, and you can choose whether you want to show the day of the week it's previewing what it's going to show you here uh, it can also show the time uh, and then you can also choose between a 24-hour clock or not uh, or show am or pm those sorts of things whether you want the little fl uh, flashing separators between the minutes and uh, hours uh, and whether you want it to display with seconds or not uh, like that so that you can see we've got little flashing uh, separators there and you can have it announce, announce the time if you want so if you want it to actually tell you the time every hour or every half hour or every quarter hour I can't think of anything more annoying personally but if you did want it to do that you could turn that on <laughs> uh, so obviously that is an accessibility feature for somebody who does uh, you know maybe can't see it or wants to be notified of the time uh, I actually have mine as analog and the reason being because uh, as this is a desktop computer I do actually have a clock in the room so I've just changed it to analog so that it doesn't take up any space on my, uh, on my menu bar it doesn't take, to, take up too much space rather 
Next is Spotlight. So do you want that to actually show up in the menu bar? And Spotlight is the thing that I mentioned earlier. So pressing Command Space will bring up the Spotlight menu, but you can also have it show up in the menu bar. Now mine's actually hidden away using my bartender at the moment, so it's in there. Uh, but that would basically mean you can just activate it by clicking on that as well. So uh, because it's command space and it's so easy. I don't really ever go up to the top corner to the uh, to where it is in the menu bar. So it might be something that you just want to take out to save you a little bit of menu bar space. Uh, again with uh, Siri, so there is a shortcut for Siri, so I don't necessarily need it in the menu bar for me to be able to go and click it in the menu bar itself. Uh, if I was going to activate it, I would just use the shortcut. Uh, I'm not currently using Time Machine, I have done in the past, uh, but if you were using Time Machine, which is Apple's built-in backup solution, uh, then you can uh, have that show in the menu bar as well. So now we've covered the dock and menu bar. <laughs> so the next one is uh, Mission Controls. Well, I just had to uh, snip out a little bit from this video because uh, I realized I haven't got something quite set up the way it needs to be on <laughs> uh, to do my screen sharing. But basically, so we're in Mission Control and there are a few different settings in here to look at. So Mission Control is this thing that basically uh, when you activate it, it is going to show you uh, all of the things that are on your screen. So if I do like that, you can see how it's sort of spacing out. In fact, you probably can't see many things open. Let me open a few more things on my screen and you'll perhaps be able to get a bit of a better idea. So I'll open these things. So now you can see my screen is a bit of a mess, isn't it? So if I just activate expose, a uh, mission control rather, it will show me all the different things on my, uh, my screen. So if I uh, come back into this one, you can then just go and choose the particular app that you want to select. Uh, I don't know why I'm showing you this one. You can't see that this is my Ecamm Live uh, <laughs> uh, window, but it's uh, hidden from your view. So here I can just select which one I want to go to and that will bring it to the forefront. So it's just a way for you to basically uh, get to different layers of uh, apps that may be hidden away. Uh, so here you can say automatically rearrange spaces based on mo most recent use. Well, spaces is another feature altogether, which is basically uh, up at the top here, you can see I've got desktop one and desktop two. So you can actually add multiple desktops so that you could have them as different sort of working spaces. You might want email on one, uh, some Excel on another or something like that, who knows. Uh, and if you've got multiple different monitors, then you can have different spaces on different uh, monitors as well. And this allows you to just sort of flick between those. So what this app here is in mission control is is automatically rearrange spaces based on the most recent use. Uh, so that would basically, uh, as it's saying, <laughs> rearrange these different spaces, these different desktops based on most recent use. And personally, I don't like that because I like to just know exactly, you know, screen one is for X, screen two is for Y and so on and so forth. So, uh, but that is personal preference. Next is when switching to an application, switch to a space with open windows for the application. So if, for example, you had all of your Excel windows open in one particular space, uh, then having this toggled on would mean that when you click on Excel, it would just go straight over to that particular space. Or if you opened a new uh, Excel file, for example, it would open it in that space to keep them all sort of grouped together. Uh, group windows by application. So that is as well when you're... Uh, uh, opening spaces like this, uh, sorry, mission control like that, it would group all of the different uh, application windows together. Uh, displays have separate spaces. So that basically means that you could maybe have, if you've got two two displays, you could maybe have one that's got two spaces on and another one that's got three or whatever you wanted. And so they are all separate. So uh, I definitely have that on. And it also means that when you switch between spaces in one monitor, it doesn't change what's on the other one. Whereas if, they, if you didn't have this toggled on, then you would just say have two spaces on each monitor. And when you flick from one space to another, it would move all of them together. Next is uh, mouse and keyboard shortcuts. So uh, you've got mission control, which is what we've just been doing. So control and the little up arrow, and that shows you all of the different uh, windows. But you can also do it by application. So if you press control and down, it will do it for just that open application. So if you've got an application that's got multiple windows open or multiple documents, uh, then it would open. It would just show you basically all of the documents open that are in that particular application. Show desktop is F11. Uh, so that is basically going to clear everything off your desktop so that you can see what's underneath. So if you do have files on your desktop and you want to easily get to them, then that is how you can uh, toggle those. You can also assign all of these to different mouse buttons as well. So if you wanted to uh, assign those to a mouse button, you can just do it from within here as well. 
the hot corners that I mentioned earlier uh, are also featured in Mission Control as well because some of the Mission Control features you can activate with hot corners. So it's exactly the same uh, uh, functionality that we looked at earlier. It's just that it's also been duplicated in uh, this section. And that is the Mission Control. Now I'm actually going to stop there because it's about 30 odd minutes that we've been going or a little bit longer. Uh, and all of these other ones are specifically for uh, language, region, things like that. And so uh, for most people, uh, you probably won't need to set these sorts of things up. So as I say, I will do one on uh, uh, sort of accessibility, things like that. Uh, if you are sort of international and you want different keyboard settings, you can do that from within here. But again, it's really most people, once they've set up their keyboard and things like that at the uh, from the start, they won't need to come into those. So that is where I'm going to leave it for this video. But if you've got any any particular questions about any of the other settings and you've got a new Mac and you're not sure about them, then do leave them in the comments and uh, I will certainly look to make a video to answer those questions. And if anything that I've said in this video is unclear or if you're doing things differently, then also feel free to comment and let me know as well. And if you found this useful, as always, <laughs> Don't forget to go and hit that like and subscribe button and turn on notifications. And uh, also, if you know anybody else who's got a new Mac who you think might find this useful, then feel free to go and share it as well. I don't mind. You can share it with as many people as you want. <laughs> so uh, what I'll do is I'll leave a link to my playlist over on the bottom right with all my other sort of Mac setup videos. Uh, and until the next time, have a great day.